Previously on Gears. <laughs> Speaking of a man full of energy and, well, I tell you, he's, uh, he's in Durban. He lives in Durban. And he's joining us uh, via Skype this afternoon. You can see some trophies in the background there. Quite cool, eh, Dozy? Very cool. Handsome, okay? Very handsome. Handsome, okay. His name is Matthew Swanepoel. He is the uh, Formula BMW 2013 Asia champion. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Sasha. Thanks so much for having me. No, it's our pleasure. We would have, uh, I know that you got hold of me before the uh, Christmas break, but unfortunately we were ready on leave. But I'm glad that you're still around. Um, number one, first of all, congratulations on, on uh, the title. It must be a great feather in your cap. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, going into the beginning of the year, it felt, uh, I felt quite positive about the championship. But then uh, the first two rounds went fantastic. Um, actually, they were both during school exams the whole time, so I was trying to juggle the two because it's my final year at school. And um, so I went into the last two rounds a bit on the back foot, I think I was fourth in the championship. And uh, it just, it really got, I really uh, sort of, I think I focused quite hard on the last two rounds and I really pushed hard and I managed to get enough points to secure the championship, which is really, really good. I'm, I'm really happy that I won. That's, uh, it's quite extraordinary, Matthew. Um, number one, did you pass him a trick? I did, in fact, yeah. Yay! <laughs> there we go. Congratulations. That's the most important thing. Just tell us, Matthew, for those of us who don't know much about you, tell us a, a little bit about your background of, of motorsport and motor racing and how you managed to get into the Asia BMW, Formula BMW uh, Championship. Well, I've, I've been karting for the majority of my life. Um, I started when I was six and I uh, managed to start winning a few regional titles and then went on to win two national titles back-to-back. And from then on, I was actually scouted um, by Peter Thompson from Meritus GP um, in Asia. And uh, I, was, I went over for a test um, and I decided, well, you know, that's what I was going to do in 2013 because of test, I, I did quite well in the initial test. And so I had to make the step sometime or another, and especially sort of getting quite old now, I'm 18 already. I had to make the step. And so um, I made the step and then last year I raced. Um, in the in the Asian Cup Championship, and I managed to win it, and um, so I think that that was actually a very positive start to my single seater career, and uh, I think it puts me on the front foot um, for the for the season ahead and and 2014 and what's to come. Really. All right, we'll get on to we'll get on to what's to come in in a couple of moments from now, uh, Matthew. The one thing we know is as South Africans, we've got a, a tremendous amount of talented uh, drivers and riders uh, within the country, but most of the time, going to race internationally is very cost prohibitive. How did you manage to come up? Did you have sponsors on board? As you say, you were scouted by this uh, by by the uh, the group in Asia. Did they manage to to cover all of your costs? Um, in fact, not initially. Um, I went uh, over there for my first test. I sort of, I didn't really make a name for myself at the beginning of the year, but then towards the end of the year and sort of middle of the year, um, quite a few teams started watching me, and I got quite a few teams started getting in contact with me and quite a few different people, which was positive. And then at the end of the season, I secured a small sponsorship. So actually, there was nothing initially. Um, my dad had to come up with with all the money. Um, to pay for the season, but fortunately at the end of the season I did secure a small sponsorship and that's led to me racing in, in Asia again in 2014. All right, there we go. Very, very cool. Very lucky to have that, um, that, that, uh, that on the side. Um, to, to have your, uh, your dad to, to try and get you there because I know yeah. how, how uh, expensive things can really be. So, Matthew, you finished 2013. How many events, uh, how many races were there during the season? There were 12 races in total, um, but only spread over four rounds, so uh, okay. three races for a round. And um, the last two rounds were back-to-back, -back, so I was actually in the car for a, a total of, of seven days, uh, which was quite tiring on the body because, in, especially in Malaysia, the temperatures in the car probably get around 60 to 65 degrees, and so your body takes a lot of strength. So that last, those last two rounds were really a push for all the drivers um, with those temperatures and with with the conditions, it's, it's tough. No, I can, I can uh, well imagine. So were you commuting? I mean, so you, you were doing your uh, matric uh, uh, work over here and then, as you say, flying for the, for the four different rounds. Listen, I mean, I know that it, it's, it's hard work because you're doing basically three races over two days, but, uh, or is it three races in one day? Uh, it was 
ready to spread. Some races, I had one, uh, some days I had one race, some days I had two races. Okay. So it was spread out to a certain extent. All right. So uh, you were commuting back and forth from uh, from South Africa to to Asia to go and take part. Your favorite circuit that that you raced on uh, this past uh, year? Well, they're all based at Sepang. Um, oh, they all at Sepang. Okay. Yeah, all at Sepang F1 track. Um, really fantastic circuits. Mm. Um, five and a half k's long. Uh, really spread out. Massive straights, long sweeps, tight corners. I mean, we're just discussing it um, towards the end of the year. And sort of Sepang is a circuit that it provides all the corners that you can possibly face within your career. And I think that's that's what makes it such a special circuit. Yeah, listen, it, it's a magnificent uh, circuit and magnificent facility as well. The the Formula BMW Asia Asia Cup, is it well supported over there? Is it something that uh, a lot of the other um formulas uh, take take quite a lot of notice and and you know how is besides your little your sponsorship that you've got have other people sat there and approached you um the asia cup were, it was actually one of the biggest series in asia this year in its first year there were uh, some of the fields were reaching up to 25 drivers at some of the rounds which you know for a single seater series that is very impressive especially mm. with the way with the economy is now if you look at europe some of, some of the fields are just starting to die out. So, I mean, 25 drivers on a grid is, is really positive for a new series. And it's, it's become the base series in Asia for the junior drivers for the transition into karting. Um, and so that it's really made a good foundation there in its first year, which is it's fantastic. But um, talking about other teams and that um, approaching me, yes, I was approached um, by numerous teams during, during the year. And then I actually stayed in Asia for two weeks after the last round, and I did a test in the Formula Masters car, which okay. is a um, sort of the F3 equivalent for Asia with the F3 engine and F3 chassis. And I did a test with Eurasia Motorsports, who approached me. I did a two-day test with them, and that went extremely well. And then I was also approached by Nexus Racing, and um, Nexus Racing are the, were the championship-winning uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Asia team. And uh, so they invited me to do a test in the Porsche GT3 car and so I completed a test a, a day's testing with them in GT3 car and that also went really well all right so now the 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 million dollar question what are you going to be doing in 2014 in terms of racing we've decided to put um, single seaters first um, especially because just there's so much to learn in single seaters and I haven't learned everything that I need to learn yet there's just a continuous uh, learning curve in single seaters. I mean, obviously the racing is extremely tight. There's limited electronics in the car, so yeah. I mean, it's 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 really driver focused, and and especially with the race craft as well. So I've decided to stick uh, with single seaters, and I'll be competing in the Formula Masters, the Chinese series. Okay. So we race China in all over China. Um, we come back, go back to Malaysia, South Korea, and uh, Taiwan. And so I'll be racing in that for 2014, and then we'll see after 2014 if what the next step will be. It sounds fantastic. How many rounds are you going to be taking? And are you going to base yourself now in Europe or in Asia, or are you just going to commute that way? And do you have any more funding, or does uh, Mr. Swanepoel Senior just got to write out the checks? At the moment, uh, we have got that partial uh, yes. funding in Asia at the moment, which is the reason why we are staying in Asia. Um, but I will be staying here and I will be studying, um, trying to juggle the two. But, uh, I mean, it's going to be tough, but I'll, I will make it work. And um, I think it's very important to obviously have the education on the side in case things don't work out for your racing. You've always got something to fall back on to. Well, listen, I'm, I'm sure you're going to make, uh, make the most of it. When, when do you start to racing? Do you go for any kind of testing first? Um, the team that you, you're going to be racing for, or, or is there any sort of association with the team that you raced for in 2013? We obviously did the test in December last year with Eurasia Motorsports. Um, we did a two-day test with them. And now there's testing coming up at the end of the month again, which I might be doing. And... Uh, then all the way leading up to the start of the championship, which I think is in May. Um, but I haven't confirmed or signed with the team yet. Reason being, I'm still sort of driving and testing around with teams. Okay. Um, so I think it's important just to find the right team uh, to go with in 2014, because obviously you're going to be spending a lot of money and obviously you want to do well. So I haven't decided on a team yet, but I have decided that will be the championship that I will be doing. And I will be doing testing, quite a bit of testing before the season starts.
Oh, that's fantastic news. I, I think the right way to go about it as well. Matthew, yesterday we had Roman De Beer on, on, uh, on the show, uh, a guy who's going to be racing in GP3. Um, now, the, the thing is, he's also base chain in South Africa. He's, he's seasoned sort of end of March. He makes his way through to Italy. What, is there anything you can do now that you're in South Africa in terms of besides physical fitness and, and mental training, in terms of driver craft and driver ability, is there anything that you can drive here to hone your skill and practice? Well, look, um, apart from the, the mental side, Matt, I always can drive carts and I try to do it on a regular basis because obviously it's a form of motorsport and it obviously sure. keeps your eye on. So I try to do that quite often. I was at the, at the racetrack um, this past weekend uh, testing. But I do have a simulator at home um, that I do, do some work on. But otherwise, there's not actually too much you can do. Mm. And I think that's, that's quite important that when you get over there, you can make an immediate impact. And obviously, being in South Africa and not being able to drive all the time, that immediate impact that you have to make is also quite difficult. So I think you have to prepare yourself physically and mentally extremely well and use the tools like you have, that you have, the simulator and obviously driving carts. Um, you've got to do what make best of what you have. It's very important. Yeah, brilliant stuff. It seems as though you do have uh, most of the, the things in place, uh, which which bodes well. I mean, uh, first time out there and the first time for the Formula BMW, you're the champion. It can only bode well and, and uh, most probably the right step. If, if 2014 goes well, the way that you expect it to go, where would you be looking? Would you still want to con uh, consider single-seaters? Would you be looking maybe to go and race in Europe? It depends really uh, where the money comes from at the end of the day. I don't think I'll stay in single seaters um, because it's, it's very expensive and um, sort of Formula One and IndyCar are the only really careers that you can actually get paid for and I think uh, it's, you need a lot of money to get, get to, to that stage of yeah. your career. So I'm aiming to go GT cars and um, I'm not sure where I'll go at the moment. It depends obviously where I can get a, a good drive and a sponsorship from. But um, that will be my goal at the end of my career is to be driving GT cars or maybe an Audi factory team or Porsche factory team. Um, I think that's, that's a more feasible route and a more realistic route in terms of making a living and a career out of, out of motorsports. Sounds fantastic, uh, Matthew. You got your head screwed on, uh, which is uh, terrific. Great to chat to you. Wish you all of the best. Please keep us updated with um, uh, the way that things progress. And uh, I will definitely talk to you uh, on one of the legs when you're over in Asia during the course of this year. Thanks so much, Sasha. Appreciate your time. No, I appreciate it too. Have a good day and have a great year. We really, really wish you well. Thank you very much. All right. There we go. What, what a clued up young kid. All of these guys that we've been speaking years old. to. I know, it's crazy. Unbelievable. There we go. Gears. Gears on balls.co.za. Weekdays, 1 p.m. to